Hey guys, and thanks for coming back to Alaska Life 907. We got a surprise in the mail yesterday. The brand new Insta 360X3 camera. I got a lot of interesting information about it. And so far the software I've been working with with this camera has been solid. The only problem I've been having so far is with the, uh, the phone application. I can take a video, I can get it on the phone, but I'm not able to edit it on my phone for some reason. So if I click on any one of these, And I think I know what the issue is. And it says swipe to for perspective. And then when I try to do this, nothing happens. It doesn't do anything. And eventually it just crashes. So I'm going to do a little bit of digging around and try to figure out what's going on here. Click on this and it takes you to the settings menu here. Uh, there's a technical support feature. Click on that. I did send them a message already, so this is all ready to go. It basically leads me to a link that takes me down here. Uh, it tells me what phones are compatible uh, with the Insta360 camera. And apparently my phone isn't compatible. I also did a Google search. So this information is, is readily available on Google, just in case you want to go search this out yourself before buying this product. And this is no way a deal breaker. It just means I, I can't edit on my phone, but I can do many of the uh, in-app features uh, from my phone. And I can also get a hold of technical support, which is super handy. Here's a summary from Insta360. Insta361 Android compatible devices. Phones not included in the list do not necessarily mean they are incompatible. Huawei, P20 Pro, P20, P10, P9, Mate 9. Mate 10, Mate 10 Pro, Honor V10, Honor 8 Lite, Samsung, Note 8, S8, S7, S7 Edge, and more. All right, so one piece that I have that I ordered separately is from a company called Bike Sauce. Their YouTube channel is called The Bike Sauce. This is a little sticker they sent me right here. Uh, this came with the piece that I ordered, and it also came with a really nice little little thank you on the back, and that, that is appreciated. We do... We do love stickers, but here's the product and it was very inexpensive. It's got this little turnkey here and this mounts to the bottom of the Insta360 and then it's got the traditional GoPro mount here on the bottom. This thing is extremely well built. I really love the product and as soon as I saw it, I just kind of had to have it. So I went straight to their website and I will, I will post a link down below in my description section on exactly how much this product is and, and with shipping and handling I think I spent 14 or 15 dollars so this is this is what it looks like and this gives me different mounting features in case I wanted to uh, mount it on our chest for fishing season we can mount it like this with a forward uh, straight single lens mode also I decided I was going to test this out today and see how that goes but it's it's, it's really well designed these these clips here they don't bend a lot Plenty of clearance here, and the, the really nice part about it is he included this screw, and you just loosen this screw up a little bit, just like that, and it makes it so you can turn the camera all the way around if you want to. That way you can either access your, your touch screen, or you can access your uh, function buttons here on the side and purchase this. So we're going to test this out today and see how it works. We're not going to do anything extreme. We're just going to mount it to the visor, see what kind of footage I can get out of the Insta360 while driving down the road. We're probably going to check out a couple different locations to, uh, you know, see what kind of shots I can get and also see how the stitching works. And another great thing that I would highly recommend people ordering is just the, just the basic selfie stick just to get you started. Now you're going to need this selfie stick. It's called the, the invisible selfie stick, but it extends quite a ways. So, I'd say that's pretty close to four feet uh, when it's all extended out. There's really nothing to it. The end here just screws onto the bottom of the camera and you just mount it up to your selfie stick just like that. And one thing that I didn't find when I was searching the, uh, for information on the camera online is I never did see a picture of the bottom of the camera. So I didn't know if it had the typical GoPro feet that flipped out or if it was just a little, little screw hole like this. And this is just a screw hole, and it mounts on your, and your selfie stick just like this. This selfie stick seems to be really well built, 
and everything here is held together by friction so when you want to close it you just push the top of the camera down and just push gently down everything closes and there is quite a bit of resistance here but it closes up pretty tight so when everything is all said and done this is the size of it so all right we're going to get out the door and i also did get a a media mod for my GoPro, so hopefully I can get better audio quality out of that because I was having some issues during the Ferrandi event when I was trying to record out in the wind and it was picking up a lot of the wind and a lot of the traffic noise. I tried to filter it out the best I could, but I, I did hear a complaint about a little bit of garbling. All right, we're going to see what we can do. Got the SC360 set up on a little visor clip. Uh, I do have a little bit of vibration out of the out of the mount that I'm using, which which hopefully is okay. When I get down here to Potter's Bars, I'm gonna change the aspect ratio of the uh, screen to a 9 by 16 ratio and see if that makes any difference when it comes to the final editing process and see how difficult, you know, the difference is between the two, 9 by 16 versus 16 by 9. So when we get down here, we're gonna make some changes and then we're gonna head on up the hill. And off to my left here, this is Potter's Marsh. And, uh, we're going to be heading on up that hill there to see what we can see from up a little bit higher. And off to my right, uh, this is what we call the Knick Arm. It's a beautiful mountain range. you got to go all the way out to the end there and then come all the way back in order to head down to, you know, Kenai, Homer, and such like that. But up here a little bit, we're going to make a left-hand turn, hit the parking lot change some settings and then head up the hill. All right, I fiddled with the settings enough and uh, couldn't find exactly what I was looking for on camera. So what I'm thinking, it might just be in the editor that they're talking about. And uh, we'll just have to see when it comes to that part of the process when we get done here. Right now we're just starting to head up to head up the mountain here and go check out what we can see. sanded this up so that's a good sign. We're gonna try to go down here and I've had times where I've gotten stuck trying to get up this hill. And this is incredibly steep. And the problem is when you come down here is you get a corner down at the very bottom and you gotta make that left. Just hard left up the hill. And quite often people come down here and we get stuck in this little valley here. It's not very easy to get out if it's uh, if it's snowing on the ground. But we'll see if we can even get up here myself. Okay, so far so good. Yeah. It's like a dirt road. Probably break that selfie stick out and uh, see what kind of see what kind of shots I can get with it. I compare the two side by side, the GoPro and the and the Insta 360. See how see how they do. All right, so this should be interesting. We're out here. We got the selfie stick out with the Insta 360. Uh, we're up here off of Clark's Road, which is off of Rabbit Creek Road uh, on the upper hillside of Anchorage. And when I mean upper hillside, yeah, these people. Every day they see a sign that says hazardous icy road conditions. <clears throat> and it, as you can see out here, it's it's absolutely beautiful. And just some amazing views. And we really, really appreciate coming up here once in a while. So running, running two cameras here. This is a little bit different I've always wanted to have more than one camera uh, just to ca capture different perspectives and possibly different audio 
for things that I want to do. And this summer with our fishing trips, I'm hoping that this will pay off and uh, capture some pretty, pretty amazing things. <clears throat> well, all right, we're going to head back down the hill and uh, see what else we can do here. Oh, I found the sunshine. Yeah. Ooh, look at that. That is gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. All right, let's get to the house. Right now what we're going to do is a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, video quality. I'll be able to, you know, split the screen on the editor and put up a nice picture to side-by-side -to, -side to see the two and what they look like. So when I ordered my Insta360 bundle, I got it through Amazon as I heard ordering uh, the camera through Hong Kong uh, directly from the factory had its had its issues. So I bought this inexpensive bundle. It's the same thing I bought pretty much for the GoPro and we haven't used up 90% of the stuff that was in there, but you can never have enough of these uh, little fittings and doodads. But this thing came with a whole ton of stuff. You always need these. Uh, little tiny pieces here uh, so those are everything about action cameras is small and they tend to get lost and we got the float this here is the uh, looks like a wrist strap and in here they give you a nice little booklet that kind of tells you what these things are gives you a nice little breakdown of a uh, you know what you get in the in the package and then on the inside here you got a nice little installation guide and this this stuff is really inexpensive don't pay a whole lot for this this bundle here so the bundle itself was like fifty dollars on amazon or something like that but it just comes with oodles and oodles of these these little connectors and stuff you need just at random times because you just you never know what application you want. You got the window mount. Now I tried the window mount with the GoPro before. I didn't really care too much for it because uh, sometimes it just tend to fall off. And when you're in the middle of driving, you don't want to you don't want to be dealing with that stuff. You got more mounts. You got a little slot for the uh, SD card holder and also quick reader. And this came with the camera. This is just my extra USB cable to connect to the computer and there's always a ton of these things that I just haven't used the wife has used them on our hunting trips this might be another head, style of headband uh, this is a little bit different than what came with the GoPro uh, this piece here is for like uh, has something to do with mounting on a helmet like a bicycle helmet I have a basic cheapo tripod now this thing is really inexpensive and these screws are super cheap but I mean it'll, it'll serve a purpose if you need a tripod in a hurry and we got a couple of those now. Now this here is just your typical chest strap. Chest strap just put it over your shoulders and then mount your camera on there got this so it's easier to get on and off this little bugger here it's always nice to have these little selfie sticks the quality of this one here is not the greatest this is really inexpensive plastic uh, when you put the weight of the camera on top of here it doesn't it doesn't really want to stay in place like it should nice to have just in case you might want to try and use it but uh, all in all that one's not the greatest now this bag here has got whole bunch of goodies now we got extra stickies uh, so if you want to mount your your things like these things here on your dashboard or something like that 
mount those on the dash. <clears throat> and we got some more little tiny sticky pads. And I'm probably going to try this out like on a, on a mirror bracket on one of my trucks uh, for one of my other videos. And that way I can get different angles of, you know, forward and backwards of, you know, what I'm doing with the truck and how it dumps and stuff like that. And I got a bag of you know, these, these random fittings here. These things get lost real quick. So it's really nice to have extras, extras around at all times. Now here are the little bases for the for the sticky pads. Put the sticky pads on the bottom, and you can just stick them anywhere you want. You can stick them on the side of your vehicle. You can stick them on your dashboard. Um, just about anywhere you might want to mount your camera. Real quick on the go. And then this piece here also looks like it's for a for a wristband or armband. And these little tethers, these are these are super handy. You want to use these whenever you can because, man, nobody wants to be dumping a $500 camera off the side of a building or, you know, trying to get a view off the side of a bridge. Now here's another little, this is another little sticky pad uh, with a tether on it. And there's just basic safety straps. Now, in my opinion, this is a real simple video editor and, and its main purpose is uh, edit the 360 footage and uh, pick your camera angles and figure out what you want to do and then you export it out and then you can import it into whatever video editor you want to Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, CapCut. I'm going to show you a real quick start on this next video clip here and we're just going to start playing through it. Now if you use the, the space bar to hit play you can either hit play with the mouse or you can hit play with the space bar so when you hit play, you can uh, get the video going. And then, to my left here. Now at this time here, I'm going to want to add a keyframe because I'm talking about something on my left. We're looking at, at Potter's Marsh. We're going to hit a keyframe here. here. This is Potter's Marsh. Uh, we're gonna be heading on up and there that's enough there. of that. So we're going to pause it again. We're going to move the camera back to the front. And everything's going to transition smoothly. And this little plus over here is the keyframe button. And, and literally, we just click the button. And then, to see what we can see from and then it'll, it'll automatically, you know, slowly rotate the camera in whatever direction you, you're choosing. And I had no idea the amount of sun glare that I'd be getting with this. I don't have any protective lenses on, on the uh, Insta lenses. And... It's just picking up hell H's yeah, somewhere. Range, you gotta go all the way out to the end there. So, I'm not the sure if I need to choose a different there. setting in the camera to try to reduce that. And that might be something I'll have to play with later. There is something called an HDR mode, and I'm not 100% sure on what that does yet. Yeah, we're just going to have to work with it from here. Now we're just going to swing the camera back over. And... Yeah, right about there. Okay, now if I want to replay the video to see what all of my keyframes did, I just hit the space bar and it'll restart the video. And it'll run everything through. Hey, off to my left here, this is Potter's Marsh. Uh, we're going to be heading on up that hill there frames. see what we Now, one thing I do like about this off is if high. I wanted to do a short uh, form video, I just come over here to the ratio. This is the part I was trying to figure out earlier. This is the part you can do here in the, in the editor. So you can do that. Now I can make a short form video for YouTube Shorts, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook Reels. And it's really easy just to switch back to the 16 by 9 which is the full mode. And that's it. Now the export process is really simple. You just click this button over here. You choose all your settings on how you want to export. And when you're dealing with files this large, it's a good idea to go directly uh, to an external hard drive. That way you keep, this is a Seagate. It's a two terabyte hard drive. It's got Wi-Fi capability. But it's a good idea to go straight to a hard drive and keep all that information from clogging up your computer or else you're going to just overheat the processor way too fast. The funny thing about this is so up here it's it's showing that I'm I'm exporting one video and when it's done it's going to make a real cheeky sound here in just a second. 
So that lets me know it's done. And then I can go back up here and go to my camera files. And this is lit up in yellow over here. That's the, that's the video I just edited, this one right here. So now I can start working on the next one and just work my way down and just continue to just export out. And then I can build a timeline when I get everything all done here. So it is time consuming uh, in that aspect because importing videos, exporting videos, uh, selecting all your keyframes, uh, the angle you want your cameras at, that, that all takes time. And if you're going to get into video editing of any type, this is something you're just going to have to deal with. But I, overall, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this so far. And the more I learn about the Insta360 camera, I think the, the more shooting with it I want to do. So we're just going to keep plugging away. Hopefully I'll have a finished product before long. All right, one thing I did want to point out is when I started editing this video, I got a bunch of keyframes in here down at the very beginning, and it's probably going to continue on. Now, these things operate on a on like a gyro, so you have to calibrate it before you even get started. Now that I'm starting to head up hills and I'm going around corners and stuff, once I hit play, this, this camera kind of has a mind of its own, and it's because, I believe it's because of the elevation and how the truck's going. I'm not picking or choosing any direction that this camera is going right now. It's just doing this all on its own. And this just requires a lot more work from the, uh, the person doing the editing. And I just wanted to point that out. And if anybody knows anything more about this, it'd be, be kind of helpful. I mean, if there's a way I can, you know, kind of get the camera to look in one direction instead of just do its own thing and be be nice to know. So you got any information on that, just, just drop it down in the comments below. Other than that, it's not a super huge deal. It's just something I'll have to work around because I do I do like to go up in the hills a lot and this is this is definitely something different as you know see how the camera's just swinging and I don't have any keyframes in here whatsoever. So now I need to go back and I need to add keyframes. You know just just so it's not naturally wandering all over the place and it's actually looking at at what I want it to look at, not what the camera's deciding. Because it's it's definitely not on me mode or anything like that. It's just the just the regular basic camera settings right now, because uh, I'm a newbie and I just gotta figure this out. Alright, what I wanted to show you here was just the amount of keyframes I had to enter in here. Like you got two keyframes there, three, and then we're just you know, four. I mean it's just a lot of keyframes and this changing elevation up here. All right, now we're gonna go export this because I just previewed it, it's done. Choose your file path. I put a file in the uh, in the hard drive called 360, that way everything goes in there. Let me just, you wanna rename your file, that way you can recognize it and you can put it in order when it comes to doing your timeline. Now I'm not very techy, so I don't know what all this bitrate stuff is. I'm not too confident on changing resolutions quite yet so I'm gonna have to look into that and do some more experimenting with that part and then uh, yeah, there we go you just hit export and then down here at the very bottom it'll start you'll start seeing a little bar come across it'll give you your progress and then it'll tell you the percentage right there and when it's done like I said before it gives you that little cheeky sound but all in all the process isn't bad and I am definitely not disappointed with any of this yet the only thing I'm having a hard time with is basically the glare on the lens and the amount of white that I'm getting off the snow so I'm gonna have to figure out a, a setting in the camera to try to improve that at some point so what's my opinion of the Insta360 and the GoPro media mod the picture and sound quality was far better with the GoPro but I've also had some time to practice with it before this video. I really do appreciate the sound quality of the GoPro Media Mod, along with the external ports it provides if I want to add an external battery. The Insta360 has a pretty good microphone built in, and I did have to adjust the volume for this video by 6 decibels in order to hear myself clearly. I'm not sure about the picture being so white and hazy. It could have something to do with being behind a windshield, and it wasn't noticeable when I was outside the vehicle. But I guess I'll have to do some homework and dive into the settings a little deeper. So far my camera has been fun to use, and the editing process on the PC goes pretty smooth. After using most of the editing features, I found a quicker way of getting the camera to track objects. When using the tracking feature, it does take a little bit of time, but I believe it's quicker than doing it keyframe by keyframe. So make sure to preview your video a couple of times before trying to export. This will help ensure everything will look buttery smooth and the camera swinging in the direction you want it to. 
It's my opinion that the Insta360 software is user friendly on the phone or computer. Before purchasing, be sure your phone is compatible with the app to avoid frustration. The camera seems to function similar to a smartphone and cradles the same way in your hand. After showing my wife how easy it is to use and edit, she decided she wants one for her own. And there goes another $500. So which one is the best is debatable because I believe they both serve a specific purpose. And having a camera that shoots in all directions at the same time will create tons of video creation opportunities. We hope you enjoyed the video. And if you found any of this information useful, please let us know down in the comments below. Until next time, Alaska Life Dino 7 family.